Hi, I'm Mark Zipp at Crocker Farm Auction and I'm here to discuss an extraordinary example of Southern folk art that we'll be offering in our March 23rd auction. This face jug is the best example that we've ever handled uh, from Edgefield, South Carolina. It's got a lot of the bells and whistles that one looks for in the best examples of Edgefield face vessels. Its size is great. Its form is fantastic. There's um, not too many of this form known. Sometimes these are referred to as a monkey jug. We refer to them as a harvest jug. Um, you can see the spout is actually wheel thrown and applied after this domed form is thrown. And a hole is carved in the back of the jug and, and the spout is applied there. You also see it has this arched rainbow shaped handle that is applied across the top. And the glaze is great. It has this wonderful green glaze, I'm very typical of Edgefield wares. You can find a lot of jugs without faces many from the BF Landrum site, that, among others, that have this kind of glaze. Um, and the condition's immaculate. I mean, it's really fantastic. It has a few chips on the ears, and that's it. But the thing that obviously really sets this example apart is the face. It has this fantastic, highly expressive face. The classic edge field expression that you find on most face jugs where the teeth are gritted and bared and the, the, the figure has a um, excited or angered or pained expression. Um, that's what's conveyed on this piece and you find on so many other uh, great edge field examples. The potter here has actually manipulated the jug's surface and this is another treatment that you find on the more advanced, the more well-developed Edgefield face vessels. When the jug is in a, a softer state before it's fully set, the potter has actually flattened this, the, the front of it. And you can see just how more ovoid it is on this side and just how flattened it is on that side. And that creates the facial structure. So we have this wide, flattened face with extending cheekbones on the sides, applied eyes with kaolin inserts, another classic Edgefield feature. These are left unglazed. The nose is very well developed. You can see um, we have sculpting marks around the body of it, producing a small point on the tip of the nose and then the nostrils and then the underside of the nostrils are lightly depressed. There's some light knife marks or finger, fingernail marks you can find around um, the mouth and over on the side of the mouth. The mouth of course is one of the best parts of this piece. You have the kaolin insert, heavily incised to produce a number of small clenched teeth. The lips are prominent and you can see that the potter has actually flattened them to an extent. The ears are somewhat crudely applied with a tragus on the interior of each. And a kind of pinched style to the, to the ear itself. So it's a great face. It's, it's clearly done by somebody who was familiar with 
face jug production and had done a number of these before. Um, this wasn't a first effort or an early effort. This is most likely a later effort by somebody who was very familiar with the process. You can even see this is kind of unusual. There's actually a delineation between the jug and the face. The potter's actually carved a groove, presumably with his hand, with his thumb or his finger, um, and created this, this separation between the forehead and the top of the jug. Which almost reminds me of some of the salt glaze examples you see from the Remy's and uh, the Mid-Atlantic where they actually apply this pronounced semi-lunate arch above the eyes. Very cool thing. The other standout feature of this jug is of course the mustache. And what went, you know, what took this piece from, from a phenomenal object to an object that is really out in the stratosphere is that mustache. It's really an incredible feature for an Edgefield face jug. There's only a few known with that. And if you've ever been to the High Museum, um, they have a fantastic jar or uh, umbrella stand, a very tall cylindrical piece. And the piece has a, has a darker glaze than this um, and actually has painted lips, but it has a mustache, a Fu Manchu style mustache, very similar to this. This example has a very nice twist you can see on each end. And you know, we actually received words. There's one theory that this is a, actually a self-portrait, or not a self-portrait, but a, a portrait of Thomas Davies made at his pottery. We can't say that. Um, <laughs> with, with any, um, you know, definitive answer, and it's just one theory going around, but it is interesting to note, and I just thought I would do this because it's always fun to talk about different theories and ideas with this stuff. Um, Thomas Davies does have a drooping mustache of significantly larger proportions than this, but the potter can only go down so far um, to the base of the jug, and it appears that he also has a little twist to it. And this, of course, is Syndicate Baldwin's great noble jar. Very well-known book on the subject. This jug relates to a couple pieces in this book. And one is an iconic piece, very iconic, one of the greatest face vessels known, the Joe Kirksey face jug that's in the collection of the High Museum. You can see just how similar these are. Although the Kirksey jug has a less dramatically uh, flattened face, it does not have a mustache. The teeth are incised in a cruder fashion and the overall structure of the face appears a, appears a little quicker, a little more haphazard. Um, so, you know, I would say these are definitely jugs by the same school, whether the same maker, who knows. Um, it could be entirely possible that this is an earlier or a hastier work by the same potter. And then another face jug, also very well known, is in the Tony Marie Shank collection. Similar glaze, similar style, sideways handle instead of a, um, a frontways running handle. Um, and it lacks the mustache, but you can see again, it's a simpler facial features, simpler um, construction of the face, but um, most likely the same maker or school. So one thing we've noticed about this face jug since we've had it, 
and it's, it's brought about um, a lot of conjecture in our family, a lot of different thoughts and theories, and we can't quite come to a conclusion on it. But there's an interesting stamp on the back of the handle. And the existence of this depressed mark filled with glaze, right on the handle, at the base of the handle, perfectly centered, makes us think there's a chance that, that this was an intentional potter's stamp, much like you find um, on earlier Landrum family pieces, stamps at the base or elsewhere. Um, and it looks, it's almost shaped like a heart. I'm not sure if you can get that in the video, but okay, there you go. Maybe I'll turn it this way. But it may just be a stone ping. It may just be an in the firing ping filled with glaze. Uh, it may be an intentional potter stamp. So we, we know that a lot of the Edgefield stamps are uh, fairly small and fairly simple. And so we wanted to present that to you, the viewer, um, so you could make your own judgment. But an interesting, thought-provoking feature of this piece. You can also see the underside where there's some fingerprints for when the potter dunked it in its glaze. Probably held it something like this. Then we have some interesting modeling of the glaze throughout the base. You can see where it's lighter as it flows down the body. Creating a kind of rust colored hue and then the unglazed areas at the base where it's even lighter. Really beautiful surface. You can see the iron spotting throughout. Even has a little iron cinder on his nose. There's some old wax here on the spout, which um, may have had something to do with sealing it at some point, sealing this, this opening for holding some sort of liquor. And just to run through the condition, as I said, the condition's immaculate. If we get some close-ups of the ears. We have a small chip here. And it looks like maybe like a flea bite chip there. And some additional shallow chipping right here. And right here. One of the great things about our job here at Crocker Farm is the treasure hunt aspect of the job. You don't know what you're gonna find each day. You don't know what is going to be emailed to you when you get up in the morning. And of course, we've been blessed with masterpiece examples of American pottery uh, since our inception. Early on, we had that great H. Myers water cooler with the incised bird. I believe that was in our first sale. Um, we had the great pair of whippets back in 2013, I believe it was, that uh, were made in Winchester and signed by Samuel Bell. Uh, there's also the incised Morgan Maker water cooler that we had that came out of Florida that was actually displayed at a hotel in 
uh, Annapolis, Maryland. And so when we get contacted with these things, it really gets our blood pumping. It really gives us um, hope that there are still exciting fresh pieces out there to be found. And this piece is no exception. This is one of those pieces, um, certainly in our top 10 of new discoveries, uh, that has us very excited. Um, to have a piece survive in this condition, in this form, with this type of face, this kind of folk art appeal is very exciting to us and we are thrilled to offer it in our March 23rd auction.